Um, hey guys, this is uh, Mike interviewing uh, Patrick Leary of Buy Sells. Uh, he's been in the industry since it was not an industry. Um, that's good, that's true. And um, so now he's with a new company, and uh, I'm sure you guys have seen some noise about it. So uh, he's here to tell you what's going on. So thanks, Mike. First, I want to take kind of why I'm here. So as many of you guys know, I'm, I'm as married to this industry as I am my wife. And I'm on my third wife, but only my first WISP industry. So I love this space. But the problem is, I've never been able to have something that, I, that could address really the needs of most everyone. Or I had something, but they couldn't afford it. So I think I found a place that has a value equation that really meets the needs of probably 80% of these guys. And, but there are other things that factor into my decision as to come here. I, I wouldn't have done that with any Chinese-based manufacturing company. The reason I joined BuySells is because the, the founder of this company is a guy named Mr. Sun Li Xing, or as I erroneously called him in the beginning, Lixen, but he's one of the inventors of LTE. And he was one of what they call the 12 fellows at Huawei, which is one of the, one of the top 12 guys. And, but he had a bigger vision for, for LTE. Basically, he thinks, and this is a funny thing to say about maybe a Chinese firm, but he thinks LTE, he wants to see the democratization of, of LTE. So he wants to make it as easy as Wi-Fi. And uh, he's quite serious about that. So what we have done is we've created uh, an LTE system that not only is doing all the great things that LTE does, which has the advanced sensitivity, uh, relative to other things, but I can now have it at base stations at sub 3,000 bucks and no ancillary extra cost except the antenna. There's no GPS costs, there's no um, big capex on management, there's no big capex on EPC, that's just a $1 per month subscriber cost. And then uh, even on the CPE, I've got a 19.5 DBI integrated CPE all day every day at a sub $200 number in low, qu in low quantities. So I think I finally got a value equation that can meet all these guys' needs, but I've also got, the grass is not necessarily gonna be greener, but there's gonna be a lot more grass because we're playing in other spaces too. I have things like a 250 watt um, microcell. So you could come down with 365 on your, on your LTE system and then if you just have a small pocket of homes or something, you could drop this microcell on there for a very, very low cost and connect a bunch of guys around you. In addition, these guys are so advanced that they invented this little guy. This is called the Elf Cell. It's the world's smallest LTE base station. This in Barcelona was sitting under Qualcomm and Qualcomm's booth under glass. And if anyone has ever been to Barcelona at Mobile World Congress, the most expensive real estate on the planet that week is in the booth of one of the top IT or telecom companies. And Qualcomm thought enough of this to have this in their booth. It uses a new Qualcomm chip. So these guys are really big, <coughs> big thinkers and they're doing some really innovative stuff. We'll be early to market with um, LTEU for just for, for WISPs. So we're talking big, huge pipes down in five, eight up in five one we have the ability to do custom spins maybe down in three six five or or a cbrs band and up in five dot one a lot of interesting things we we hope to do that sounds exciting it is exciting so we have um we've had a great show we have about 40 guys signed up to do trials with this uh, they'll start hanging on the towers in early may we have our first shipments coming in at the end of april we have a fcc certification should be done by the end of April. Everything is done, but the but the pictures, the paperwork is all done. All that's done. So we're very hopeful. We have a 200. We have the um, 10 watt product for 2.5 as well, and there'll be a Canadian version for this. Um, so even there, we're talking about dollars um, that are substantially less than people have come to expect. And best of all, you should be able to hang this thing and get it. You should be able to hang this thing and get it running with less than five settings to have to configure to get this thing up. So truly, 4, 4G is easy as Wi-Fi. What's your thoughts on 5 gigahertz LTE? You know, I think, I know that I've known this community a long time, I think we tend to get afraid of some things. 
more than we should. Like even the, the beginning of the CBRS ban, you, people were scared. You know, oh my God, I'm going to lose my 365. No, really, you don't. Actually, a lot of the onerous rules are going away. You won't have the restricted ban side of it. All that stuff kind of goes away, and all that stuff is now going to be general authorized access. So you're not really losing anything. Um, in fact, if you were using it before, you have some protection, and you didn't do anything to earn it. So not a bad deal. And then you get more GAA with the new band. So I think there's a lot more opportunity than things that people should be afraid of. I think the same will also happen, frankly, in, um, in LTEU, and especially if we have something to say about it. So we're not, we're not producing just for, for carriers, although we are doing some interesting things with Facebook and with Intel. Like for example, uh, Facebook has a program called the TIP, Telecom Infra Project. They've only invited about 27 companies. Among them, we are the only uh, Chinese-based company. What is this thing? It's a program that will put on solar-powered drones like over Africa to provide broadband, and it'll be our little, our little base stations on the drones. So that's the kind of connection that this guy has, right? So there will be opportunities in LTEU and LAA even for WITS. And we'll be making products that'll leverage those technologies. We've already shown the first LAA um, base station in the world. We did that with Intel in Barcelona. So we were, the, we were the first to demonstrate that. And we hope that maybe we'll be very early to market with that sort of as well. And we will be configuring these kinds of things in WISP packages as well. That's, that's good. You, had, uh, you have experience on both sides of the coin and, and uh, leverage that where necessary. Yeah, and then talking about experience on both sides of the coin, I, I brought in a couple guys I think the market knows really well, like, like Rick Harnish and, and Boone Senecom, because um, you know, I want people to feel comfortable and, and have and trust. But it is funny, he's never been on this side, on the manufacturing side, so it's a bit of, it's a cool education for him to see this happening. But we're, we're excited, they, everyone has been really receptive. I was wondering if there'd be any negativity. Everyone's been great, and I think universally people are happy and new competitors come into the market. That's a sign of a vibrant market, competition is good. Um, I have nothing bad to say about my former company. Those are great guys. It's a great product. I just wanted to do something different, and I think we have the opportunity to do that here. Good. Yeah. Um, and I think that says a lot of the company to have to have gained gained the trust of so many of the industry heavy hitters of you, of Rick, of Boone, or were I, gullible. One or the other. Well, I was trying to say nice things, no. but uh, but you're right. I'll, I'll tell you something interesting. One of the Early on, I saw these guys at, at Wispalooza over a year ago. What was really interesting to me is that these guys were there. They weren't at a telco show. They weren't at a cable show. They knew enough to be there. And I didn't know them, so I thought, who are these guys? Someone over there is really smart because they knew who the early adopters were. So they went here first. So that got me curious about these guys, thinking, okay, there's some, there's some big, good thinkers there. So you're right, they, they do get it, and um, I, that is largely why I'm here. They, you know, honestly, they're afraid of the coming under a Chinese brand, but I said, don't be. It's our job to adjust people's perception of what it means to be a, a Chinese manufacturer. These guys are also the second generation of that. They're not, they're not manufacturing big pen caps. They're interested in high quality stuff, you know. Like and these guys, like, like I said, these are, these are heavy hitters from the LTE space. They're, and we're very well capitalized. There's 200 people working overseas already for this company. Or we put them over 200 with our little five. <laughs> but it's a little power group, you know. So okay. we're excited. Good. At, uh, so, you know, I was, uh, was being kind of nice earlier, saying that, uh, you, know, you know, that they must have some good to attract you guys. Thank you. Now I'm going to kind of turn and get a little uh, more edgy. Um, you wouldn't be you, Mike, if that were the case. Um, what... Uh, What's the, what's the deal with the SFP ports on your uh, on your infrastructure radios? Isn't that funny, right? Well, we are still in our nascent thing, right? So I don't expect everything will be baked. And and as I tell the guys doing the trials, listen, some things are going to break, and it's not a successful trial if you don't if you haven't found your limits. Sure. It's, it's why you have test tracks. You know, you need to know when the car is going to spin out, and if that's going to happen, I just don't know when that point happens. So. There will be an evolution. For example, there are other things. 
my alignment lights were going to be initially, they have internal. We're going to modify that so they're external, little things like that. Um, this has an SFP module in the 10 watt, but the smaller one doesn't. So we'll rectify that as well. These, these are all it's just part of the game, right? So when you when you first car, it evolves. Sure. But sure. I think from from the start, we'll have some of the most important things down. Sure. Which is simplicity and cost value. Sure. Yeah. It's, uh, and I think uh, you know. I think it speaks enough to to the SFP efforts that you have it on some products and that uh, it'll come to others. Uh, I'm an old fiber guy, so I was the guy in the manhole in the fusions place. Sure. I am. Right. A, I know fiber is the end game for fix, but fiber doesn't connect the third dimension. So sure. Uh, but I I love fiber. It's super cool. Well, it, uh, yeah. I look. Uh, I just look forward to seeing you guys uh, kind of get big in the market, and um, I'm sure some of our viewers will as well. Put it this way: if we don't, if we don't, then. Uh, <clears throat> then I then I face the firing squad, and and maybe they have practice over there. So I don't know. <laughs> so hopefully it's quick. But you no, know, we have big plans. We have a lot we have to do. A limited time. We're in a hurry, and uh, we're excited. Right. I think we've got it in. All right. Well, thank you for your time today. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it.